Welcome to worship with First Lutheran tonight. We're glad that you're joining us. Uh, we will continue to hear from Paul's letter to the Corinthians and tonight talking about death, life, and love and how through Christ, Paul is sharing with us how all those things are weaved together and how they help us to live for the sake of those around us. Thanks for joining us.
Let us join together for our confession and to hear a word of forgiveness. Jesus calls us to deny ourselves, yet we trust in our own works rather than in God's grace. Jesus calls each of us to take up our cross, yet rather than allow our selfishness and sin to be put to death, we cling to what we know. Jesus calls us to follow him, yet we fear where faith will lead and what it might change in our lives. In this moment of silence, we confess the sin that separates us from one another and from God. Let us take a few moments for silence and reflection. People of God, hear this good news. God's covenant with us is true. God is faithful even when we fail. Through the Holy Spirit, God gives us the gift of faith and makes us righteous. Believe in the good news that you are set free to live as children of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. The sermon text for today is continuing in the letter of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. Paul writes, listen, and I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. 
Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In our corresponding gospel lesson from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, beginning with the 26th verse, Jesus said, And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is the God not of the dead, but of the living. The Gospel of the Lord.
Hi, Reagan. What you doing? Oh, hey, Bobby. Um, I was trying to name all 50 states as fast as I could. <laughs> really? Why? And how many do you have so far? Um, you know, I don't, I didn't even remember to number them. And also, I didn't even set a timer. So I guess I'll have to try later. But anyway, <laughs> what are you up to? Not much. I've been kind of bored today. So I see what you've been doing. What? What have I been doing? Wow, you've been very busy. You can say that again. How do you keep finding things to do? I feel like every day is just the same thing over and over again. Well, one of my friends has actually been encouraging me to keep busy during the day, just like I would be doing if I were in the office at church all day long. But why? Well, it was getting hard for me to be at home all day long every day. Um, and I'm happy to sit and watch TV and do nothing sometimes. Believe me, I have a lot of experience doing that. But I was talking to my friend and just sharing how it's getting kind of difficult. And so she decided to send me messages every day and help encourage me to keep going. Oh, okay. What kind of things does she do to encourage you? Well, uh, she helped me come up with the list, actually. Um Stuff I've, I always say I want to do or try, but haven't gotten around to doing it. Um, so I can just pick something from that list to do all the time. And sometimes she'll send me a text or a Snapchat um, just to encourage me to keep going. That's so cool. Right? You know, actually, just this morning, we were talking about how important it is to encourage the people we care about. She sent me a verse from one of the books in the New Testament. Do you remember when we talked about Paul? In the New Testament, in the letters he wrote? Yeah, they were called epistles, right? Yeah, yeah. So one of Paul's letters, he often writes about how important it is for us to live like Christ. And that can often be a difficult thing to do. It's a big job and requires hard work. Sometimes we need some encouragement to keep us going. So in First Thessalonians, there's a verse that says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. And one of the ways my friend tries to do that is by sending me encouraging messages every day. So what was the verse she sent you? She sent me Ephesians 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more than we, all we could ever ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church forever and ever. Amen. Um, this is a verse that used to be on the wall when we were roommates in college. Um, and it helps remind both of us how much bigger God is than we are. And that God can do things that we couldn't even dream about. So those verses help to bring me a little bit of peace um, when I'm struggling with something. Wow, that's so cool. I'm so happy you have a friend that looks out for you like that. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah, me too. Actually, one of the things she's been encouraging me to do is to encourage other people. So maybe I could start sending you messages every day too, like she does for me. That'd be so great. Thanks, Reagan. Of course, Bobby. Anytime. You know, I think I'm going to go try and make a list of things I want to do for when I'm bored, like you did. Awesome. That sounds like a great idea. Good luck. Thanks. See you later. Okay, bye. All right. So, Alabama. Maybe if I sing the song. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona. Arkansas. Oh, I can't write that fast. Whew. Join me in prayer. Lord, as we gather for this time of worship, may these words be yours and not mine. May they be heard and received today with open hearts and open minds. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. To die would be an awfully big adventure. Do you recognize those words? Peter Pan. The line didn't make it into... Walt Disney's animated version, but it was part of the original 1904 play, Peter and Wendy. 
And it asks the question, how do you look at death? Is it something with stinging finality that's to be avoided at all costs, even to avoid any signs that come up in our lives that we're getting older and approaching death? Or is death instead the beginning of something new? Paul says it's a bit of a mystery. But thanks to Jesus Christ, it's not something that we need to be afraid of. It's not something that should drive the way that we live. Thanks to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, to die would, in fact, be an awfully big adventure. Ironically, the story of Peter Pan, in many ways, is about avoiding death, or to, to make it a little bit lighter. It's about remaining young forever. It's about a boy that never wanted to grow up. He creates a place called Neverland where he can continue to enjoy his boyhood without any of the troubles that come with growing up. Neverland lets him preserve his youth forever. You know, we live right here in, in our own variety of Neverland, right here in the Lakes area. There's a, there's a lot of opportunities to pretend like you're still a kid, like you're still young, right? You can, you can head on down to Preservation Plaza where you can hear where has been preserved the music of your youth. You can dance in a place that attempts to preserve the experience of the dance hall that you grew up with. And perhaps my favorite of all, you can pretend like you're still a college student at the imaginary University of Okaboji. If this isn't a version of Neverland, I don't know what is, folks. You know, I want to play at being young again just as much as the next person. But being young forever overlooks an important reality. You know, if, if you're not growing older, you're also not really living, are you? When Peter says to Wendy in the original play, to die would be an awfully big adventure, it's because to stay in Neverland would mean to never grow old and, ironically, to never really live. You see why Disney cut this from his version of the story. In the play, Wendy has loved Peter, but every time she reaches out to touch him, he refuses to let her. To let Wendy get any closer might mean that he would do something that boys who are never going to grow up would never do. He might fall in love. So instead of letting Wendy rescue him from this particular scene where he says this, instead of letting her rescue him from being tied up as the ocean tide is coming in and threatening to drown him, he refuses to be rescued, still refuses to let her touch him, and he says to die would be an awfully big adventure. He'd rather stay a boy and not live than to live and risk losing himself in love to somebody else. To lose yourself loving others. That's the kind of death that Jesus is drawing us into on the cross. That's really what Paul is after here in his letter to the Corinthians in this message of the cross, in this message that Pastor Perry shared with you just last week about what it is to love. To live and to love as Christ did means to run the very real risk of losing yourself, maybe even your life, all out of love for others. It's the very thing that Christ did on the cross. He grew up and he died out of love for you. Died preserving not his life, but yours. It's the kind of life and the kind of love that he's calling you to live for the sake of others. Now maybe you look at that, you know, to, to lose your life all for the sake of loving others. Maybe you look at that and it's a bit frightening. But through Christ, Paul offers some comfort here. He writes, 
The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. He's saying that death's sting used to be that it was so final. It was our ending, full stop. It was what we deserved for our sins. But Paul writes, thanks be to God, that's not how the story ends. It says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For those who die in Christ, there is no sting of finality. There is no ending, but rather new life. Life lived fully and completely in, with, and through the grace of God. And if that's the case, folks, and it is in Jesus Christ, then to die would, in fact, be an awfully big adventure. What would it look like to, to live into that adventure that God has ahead of us, to live into that future adventure instead of reaching back and trying to relive the adventure of our youth? What would it be like to live into this future life, to be able to live knowing that you're loved fully and completely, both now but especially in the life that's to come, to love others and even be willing to lose your life for them because you know that this life isn't all that there is. What if you were free to, to spend up this life living for others knowing that when it's all used up, well, this was just the beginning of a great adventure that was yet to come. You know, for, for those of you who have seen it, there's a glimpse of what this life looks like in Steven Spielberg's take on the Peter Pan story called Hook. Peter Pan, he's all grown up, but he's forced to go back to Neverland one last time when Captain Hook kidnaps his very own children. And over the course of the film, the adult Peter Pan learns from his family and his friends that loving might, in fact, mean losing yourself, maybe even your life. And it's while fighting, not to preserve his own life, but for the sake of of his kids that Peter says with a whole new meaning apart from the original play. He's fighting Hook, not for his own life, but for the sake of his children, and he says to die would be a grand adventure. He finds his purpose not in living to preserve himself, but in dying to preserve the ones he loves. That's the kind of living that Christ is inviting us into, life lived for the sake of others. With him, we can honestly and joyfully say those words. To die would be just the start of an awfully big adventure. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker you need freedom for saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of the day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just stay right When there's a better life, there's a better life If you got pain, he's a pain taker If you feel lost, he's a way
believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify, if you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. Let's join together to confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today and we we give you thanks for the life that you bring to us. You know that uh, death has such a sting, but you and your life, your death and your resurrection has brought new meaning to death and has taken away that sting. So Lord, keep us full of your grace and full of that hope of everlasting life with you. And Lord, we, we give you thanks today for those who have served this country and those who have sacrificed uh, some or all of their lives for our freedoms, for our ability to, to live in this land. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to, to honor them and honor the, the gift that they have given to us and to remember them and remember their sacrifices and to remember also the sacrifices of their families uh, that they had given up uh, for, for this country and for our freedom. And Lord, today we remember all who uh, are not here with us, who have played a role in our lives, who have made a difference in shaping who we are. And we thank you for them. Lord, we pray for this country in this time of, of turmoil in the uh, with the coronavirus, we ask your blessings upon the healthcare workers, all who are essential. We pray uh, during this time of opening up the states that you would uh, watch over us, that you would keep us safe. Lord, we pray also today for our graduating seniors uh, from high school. We pray that you would be with them, that you would strengthen them during this, this time uh, that is different than what they had they had hoped and planned for for so many years but we pray that you would be with them as they venture off into to new things whether that be school or employment whatever it may be guide and direct their steps and we pray for all um, who who are graduating not just our high school seniors but those from college those from master's degrees or higher education 
we just ask that you would be with, with each of them. Lord, we also uh, pray today that you would be with those who are uh, recovering from illnesses and recovering from surgeries. We pray especially uh, for Dick Hoffman and for Harold Vugdevine that you would be with them. We also give you thanks today for Jack Hardy and, and his uh, 92nd birthday, and we uh, celebrate with him and the, the life that, that he has lived and continues to live and bless us with. Lord, we pray for all who are grieving. We pray today especially for Teresa and Tim O'Brien and their family as they mourn the passing of Teresa's sister, Cece. Pray that you would surround them with your love and your care. And we also pray for all who are grieving. Lord, this uh, world has changed so much in the last few months, and there are so many things that we are missing, so many things that we uh, wish would be different. And we pray that you would send your comfort and your peace to each of us, to each of the the holes in our hearts, uh, the places that uh, that seem empty and that are that are unfilled today. We ask that you would fill them uh, in your due time, fill them with love, fill them with hope and with joy. Lord, at this time we lift to you the names of those who are upon our hearts and the situations uh, either silently or out loud. We lift these prayers to you, our comforter, our strength, our healer, and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Called and sent by Jesus Christ, we the people of First Lutheran are gathering to know Jesus, serving to make a difference. Mm -hmm.